everyone welcome back to my channel today we're going to be working on my Camaro ZLE and we're continuing with those aero upgrades now today we'll be installing the big wing which honestly I've been waiting and I can't wait to see how it looks once it's on but before we get started I do need to move a few cars out of the way first we'll start off by getting a cold start of the Hellcat and then getting a cold start of the 720 so we can move it out of the way and I can have more space to work Here's the APR wing that I'll be installing on the Camaro today. Now, I did get a little bit ahead of myself just because I wanted to open it mainly to look at the instructions because you guys already know how much work went into the Camaro splitter and I just really wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to be the case. But after reading the instructions and also here's some additional hardware that came inside the box, it's not as involved. Now, it seems easy the only thing that i will say is that it does have a little bit more steps than the installation for the apr wing for the gt350 but i think i'll manage at least it's it's way better <laughs> way easier than the splitter install but for now let's remove this wing take it out of the box remove the bubble wrap and then we can see it in detail Here it is, this looks so good. I can't wait to see this installed on the Camaro, but like I mentioned before, this is an APR wing, and this is the GTC 300, so it has a 67 inch wingspan. And I'm not sure if you guys can tell here, but it does have a curvature to it. Now, that same curvature matches the curvature on the stock ZLE wing. And of course, it goes without saying that this wing is carbon fiber as well. Now this one is different than the one I installed on the GT350 for a few reasons. That wing on the GT350 is completely straight, so there's no curvature, and that one has a wingspan of 71 inches. I already know some of you are wondering this, and no, there won't be any exposed holes on the trunk once I install the APR wing, so that's always good. But with that being said, let's take a look at everything we need to do in order to remove this stock wing. In order to remove the factory wing, we need to start off by removing this trunk cover. So you can see there's many clips or push pins that I don't need to remove. Once that's off, then there's two bolts that hold the center part of the wing that I don't need to take off. And then we need to remove these black caps. So there's two on each side. So once those four bolts come off, then it's kind of like a bit of the fun part where I'll have to go in with either a heat gun or maybe like a string or just to remove the adhesive and then I can pop off the wings. This is how it looks without the factory spoiler. So now that it's off, it's time to drill holes. The first thing that we're going to do is that we need to draw a straight line here from the trunk. So from these factory holes, just a straight line across. And then we need to measure 21 inches to the left and then 21 inches here towards the right. So here on both sides, we're going to have these base plates. So of course, I already went ahead and just measured them. now. 
These are going to be using this last factory hole here for both sides. So once we have that measured, and by the way, when I measure these lines, I do, well, I'll be using painter's tape just to mark it. So the straight line, and then once I measure it here, 21 inches, I'll put another strip of painter's tape and then towards the other side as well. So then once we're here and we have the 21 inches marked, then we need to draw a straight line from this factory hole all the way straight. And then we need to mark these holes right here from the base plate because then that's where we'll be drilling these holes. So that's the same thing for both the left side and the right side. So once we're done with that, it's time to open up the trunk. Now we need to add the reinforcement plate. So one on the left side and one on the right side. So those are these right here. Now you can see the shape. Now that's going to match the curvature here of the trunk. So for both sides, and you just want to make sure that you align it as close as possible there just for it to match exactly with the curvature and the shape of the trunk. And now we need to drill six holes because that's what these reinforcement plates have. So you can see there's six holes that we'll need to drill. Now when we drill, just put that there. When we drill, we'll just have to drill past this first layer only because they did provide some rivets that I have to put. But before we get into that, let's drill these holes. So that's going to be, again, the same process for the left side and the right side. And then I'll explain more about what's next. I got a little bit carried away with myself and I proceeded to the next step, but I kind of just stopped myself because I wanted to explain. So I had mentioned to you guys that we have to drill first here on top of the trunk and then here at the back of the trunk, but it's not like that. It's actually the opposite. So first we want to take those reinforcement plates and then drill those holes here. And then after we have those holes, we want to come here towards the top of the trunk and then drill those holes with those space plates here. Now, the reason you have to do these first is because once we drill these holes on the top of the trunk, then they're going to go through the base plates and then through these reinforcement plates. And then obviously they'll be secured with nuts and bolts. So I already did this side right here. Like I said, I got just a little bit carried away and I did one on this other side. Now I just need to continue the rest. Now, drilling holes, for me, it's always a bit scary, but these were just a bit more frightening just because like I mentioned, you have to just go through the first layer. There were a few times where I just kept drilling and I honestly thought it came here all the way to the top, but it didn't. So after you drill these holes, you need to add these rivets. So that's what these are in the holes. So I used a rivet gun for that. The good thing is that Astro Tools was kind enough to send me some tools a while back and they actually had a rivet gun. So this is their 1442 rivet gun and this is what I used to put these rivets here. Now you guys saw me use it. It's pretty simple. Even though this was the first time that I used that rivet gun in order to uh, put these rivets, but like I said, pretty simple. I just YouTubed how to do it and it was pretty good. So now that we have these here, so I need to move on to the right side, then add the reinforcement plates, then move on to the top of the trunk, drill the holes, and I'll see you guys once it's time to add the wing.
We are ready to move on to the next step, but before we do, let me just show you a mistake that I made. So this is on the driver's side, and look at this. This was entirely my fault. So I messed up here because once I had the tape markings here, and then I had measured 21 inches to the side, now, after I drilled the holes on the passenger side and I came here, since I had a few markings here on the tape, then I thought that this was one of the markings for the hole. So I started drilling. Good thing I stopped myself and I didn't actually make a hole. So these are the two holes where I needed to make a hole, not here. So this is what happened. Now, like I said, good thing I didn't make a hole, but since it is small, I think I can just go in with some touch-up paint and fix that. I know it's probably not going to look pretty, but I mean, I don't know what else to do here. If you guys have any other suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm like oh, a bit frustrated, but you know, at least, at least I didn't make a hole. So now we can move on to the next step. So let me just show you what's next. So if we come here to the back of the trunk, now this is the factory hole. And then these are the other two holes that we made. Now here, we need to put a bolt that has a spacer, and then we can come back up here because we're just going to use this for now to hold the pedestal. So we're going to come back to the top of the trunk and then we need to add a gasket for the base plate, then the base plate and then the pedestal. And then this bolt with the spacer is going to hold the pedestal. And then we'll add the two remaining bolts here. Now, we're just going to leave this hand tightened for now and we're going to repeat this for both sides. So meanwhile, we leave that there, then we'll just come back here. So once all the gaskets, base plates, and pedestals are on for both sides, then we can go ahead and then put the wing on both pedestals. So once the wing is secured, then we can come back here and hand tighten these and then move on to the rest of the bolts. The wing is installed, so this is how it looks. I think it looks absolutely awesome, just like how I expected it. Now, I really like how it retains the curvature from the stock wing. This one sits lower than the GT350 wing, but it sits higher than the stock ZL1 one of the wing that I removed. If you can see here, this is adjustable, so I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but there's different holes there. For now, I have it on the second hole just because I honestly, I mean, I would have to test it. So once I take it to the track, then I'll be able to test it and then just adjust it accordingly. But for now, I think having it on the second hole is fine. And once I get to the track, then I'm able to just adjust the pitch. So I really like that functionality here. And as far as these side plates, they, they're a little bit small, but I think for now, I'll just leave them here. And I think just later on in the future, I'll end up changing these for just larger ones, which is the same thing that I plan to do for the GT350 side plates. And of course, just like I told you guys, there's no exposed holes in the trunk. It does come with this little base plate right here that covers the holes. So I think it looks great. It's very aesthetic. It's functional. And you know, this is like one of those rare installations where I actually agree with the installation times and the instructions. It says from an hour to an hour and a half, I believe. And I actually agree with this. This was pretty simple. The only frightening part is drilling holes in your trunk. I mean, at least for me, but I 
I absolutely love how it looks. I love the aggressiveness and I think it looks perfect. I know you really can't see it that well in here, so I'll actually insert some clips of the car outside so you can get a better look on how the wing looks on the car. So now that I have the splitter installed, the wing is installed, there's two more pieces to completely transform the look of this car. There's one that I've been waiting for for a while now and I'm actually going to be installing it pretty soon. It's going to completely change the look of the car. It's not going to look stock anymore. Not that it does look stock, but at least from the sides, it won't look stock. So I can't wait for that one. Then the second one is something that I wasn't too sure about, but after installing the wing and the splitter, I'm like, I just have to. I have to because it's just going to change it completely, but that'll be the last part, at least for the exterior of this car. So I can't wait for those two things, but that's it. That's the end for this install. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.